What's happening guys? A very warm welcome to this video from both myself and from Rusty. Today we are going to be talking about ISO. Now I know I've done several other videos in the past surrounding different aspects of ISO. Today I want to talk about one that I've not really covered before in depth regarding native ISO and the confusion surrounding that and linking to base ISO and expanded ISO. And as an added bonus, once we've got through explaining all that, we'll use the logics behind it to explain the conundrum of Canon's ISO 160 being cleaner than ISO 100. Now, before we get into that, I realize most people watching this will probably be more than comfortable already with the basics of how ISO works within a camera. Some of you might have even seen some of my previous ISO videos where I explain it in a bit more depth, but I appreciate there might be a couple of people watching this who aren't familiar with ISO and don't understand the basics of how it works in a camera. So in order to make sense of the native, the base and the expanded, I'm going to quickly cover how ISO in a camera works. Now, for those of you who are comfortable with the concepts of ISO already and don't want to hear it all over again, then there are timestamps down below. You can feel free to skip ahead to whichever bit you want. For those of you who aren't familiar with ISO, very quickly, a camera has a sensor. The sensor is made up of millions of little photocytes, and these photocytes correspond to the pixels within an image. Now, when you take a photo with a camera, you expose the sensor to light. Now, when the light hits these photocytes, it generates a small electrical charge. And the more light that hits the sensor, the larger that charge is going to be. At the end of the exposure, the camera will read all of the voltages from each of the photocytes, convert them into a digital signal, and that is what then gets saved as a file on your camera. Now, if you don't expose those photocytes to much light, either by there not being much ambient light around, or you having a very fast shutter speed, or a very narrow aperture, then you end up with quite an underexposed image. And this is where ISO can help. So ISO takes that very weak signal that's been generated from the not much light that's been captured, and it amplifies it in order to brighten the image up. Now, all of this is extremely camera specific. Different cameras will do things in different ways. For example, some cameras will take the signal from the sensor, will then use an analog amplifier to amplify it before it goes through an analog to digital conversion, and then it will be run through the processor. So the analog amplifier is what is amplifying the signal to begin with. And here we come on to the first area that I see some people trip up on when they refer to, say, a camera's native ISO for example, being ISO 100. That's not the native ISO, that's actually the base ISO. So a base ISO is the signal being pulled off the sensor and going through no amplification at all. However, it's not always ISO 100. On a lot of cameras, it is ISO 100, but it's not a rule that all cameras are. A lot of Nikons, for example, their base ISO is ISO 64, and I believe Micro Four Thirds, a lot of theirs are ISO 200. Now, the reason for these, why different cameras have different base ISOs, is because of the ISO standards. So, I'm not getting into all of this in huge detail here, but basically there are multiple different standards for various aspects of cameras, one of which is how ISO is measured and recorded. But in essence, what happens is the standards will be that a particular ISO value and a particular aperture and a particular shutter speed on a particular lens will give you a correct exposure. So for example, it will be something like an 18% grayscale card in a certain lighting situation shot at a 1 250th of a second shutter speed with an aperture of f5.6 a correct exposure is deemed as ISO 100. So if your sensor with no amplification whatsoever is producing an underexposed image, then your base ISO is less than ISO 100. Whereas if your sensor with no amplification is overexposing your image, then you have a base ISO higher than 100. 
When we talk about native, we actually refer to a camera's native ISO range. So this is how far it's able to amplify the signal from zero, your base ISO, all the way up to whatever it may be, say 51,200, for example. And then beyond that, we go into our expanded ISO range, which is the camera using digital software to push the signal even further. Now, again, this is very camera dependent. So if we go back to the hypothetical camera I mentioned before with an analog amplifier before the AD converter, you could argue probably the native ISO range of that camera is how far the analog amplifier is able to push the signal before it's converted to digital. And then the expanded ISO would be the digital processor pushing it that little bit further. It's why you can then sometimes get an ISO below your base ISO. So for example, a lot of cameras might have a base ISO of 100, but you can open up your expanded and get down to ISO 50 or potentially even lower. So what that expanded ISO is, is actually the camera taking the raw ISO 100 base signal from your sensor and then digitally squashing that signal down to try and underexpose it. You'd basically get the same results as if you took a shot at ISO 100 in camera and then put it onto your computer, opened it up in some editing software and pull the exposure down by one stop. And this leads us on to the conundrum of Canon's ISO 160 versus ISO 100. Now, if you're not familiar with this, let me quickly brief you. In a lot of Canon cameras, I don't know if it still applies to their current generation, but certainly in a lot of their older DSLRs, if you were to take two test shots, one at ISO 100 and one at ISO 160, but with the same exposure, so a, maybe a slightly faster shutter speed, and then you were to take both of those raw files onto your computer and ramp up the shadows as much as you could, the shadows in the ISO 160 file would be cleaner than the ISO 100. And on the face of it, it doesn't make any sense because a lot of people will tell you that a camera's base ISO should be the cleanest possible shot you can get. Because in theory, if you've got a correct exposure with your base ISO, you're not needing to amplify the signal at all. So therefore that should be the cleanest possible signal you can get. Anything more than that, your signal's being amplified, it should amplify the noise as well. However, what Canon were doing with the ISO 160 shot was rather than take the ISO 100 file and just straight up amplify it to ISO 160 on the analog amplifier, then convert it and process it and save it, they were actually amplifying it up to 200 on the analog amplifier, then converting it to digital and then with the digital amplifier actually suppressing the signal back a third of a stop to ISO 160. So that in turn was able to produce slightly cleaner shadows on the ISO 160 shot than you got on the ISO 100. However, what it does also mean is that the highlights of the ISO 160 shot are noisier than the ISO 100s. But as a general rule of thumb, shooting at a camera's base ISO with the correct exposure is about as clean a shot as you're going to get because there's no amplification happening to the signal, which is another quick point I want to cover as well regarding cameras with two base ISOs. So for example, Sony cameras, or a lot of Sony cameras, have something called dual band ISO where the camera actually has two base ISOs. A lot of the A7s, for example, have a base ISO of 100 as well as a second base ISO at 640. And the reason for this is that there are two lots of circuitry on the sensor, a low gain circuit and a high gain circuit that's optimized for uh, working with a weaker signal. So what happens is if you're shooting between ISO 100 and 500, then the camera will take the signal off the sensor and put it through the low gain circuit. Once you hit ISO 640 and above, it swaps over to the high gain circuit and sends the signal down there instead. Now you still get more noise as you shoot at high ISOs, that's just a fact of life, but you get less noise at high ISOs from using the high gain circuit than you would have done if the camera had been using the low gain circuit for those same high ISOs. So 
There you are, that should be you utterly confused by now. So if you have any questions or queries regarding anything in this video, feel free to leave them in the comment box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or at least found it helpful in some way, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And then hopefully I will see you in the next video.